Hey everybody, welcome to another online cooking class. Today we are going to be making a Dijon tarragon, creamy Dijon tarragon chicken. And we're going to make it with green beans and baby bella mushrooms, just to add a little bit added flavor. What's nice about this dish, you make it all in one pot, so it's nice and easy to clean up. You don't have to spend a lot of time in the kitchen doing it. Um, and it is also dairy free. So if you are trying to avoid dairy in your diet, this is a great way to add in um, the feeling of a, like a bechamel or a white sauce <clears throat> to your dish. So let's get started. I, I actually was so excited. I was going to wear uh, one of my new aprons today and I realized that they were so colorful that with this top, it didn't quite match. So I figured I'd go with my white apron, which is actually my dad's. He was a butcher, and this is from his butcher shop. So many, many, many years old. I guess it's almost antique. <laughs> hey, Mary Ellen, thanks for joining me today. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do with this dish is we want to make that cashew cream. That's what's going to give the nice creamy base for this. Now what I did, the only thing that I did ahead of time was I soaked some cashews. I soaked them, they've been soaking for maybe about an hour um, in, I put boiling water. I'm going to rinse these out. Give them a little rinse because I didn't rinse the cashews before I did it. So I just want to do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in about a half cup of filtered water. I'll grab that from my filtered water faucet. So I added a half cup. Let me just see whether that's enough. I had a few extra cashews. It was the end of the bag. So I may want to add a little bit more liquid. Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more. I want it to be about the consistency of cream when I'm done. Now, I have a Vitamix blender, but any high speed blender will do this. And the reason I soak those cashews is because it makes a creamier sauce. I've actually done this without soaking them and it works just as well. Um, maybe a little less creamy, but it still works. So if you're in a pinch, you don't have time to soak it, or if you only soak it for a few minutes. I'm gonna give it one last. Noisy spin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mary Ellen, about my apron. I know. All right. So let me show you what we've got here. And it really is quite amazing. Actually, I could just take it from the cap here. But you can actually see it's just like a nice, smooth cream. What's in the cap is probably a little less creamy. So let me just scrape it down. I'm going to give it one more pulse. All right. And then I'm just going to set this aside for now because we're not going to add this until later on. I'm going to set the fire underneath my pot, get it started heating. I've got it about medium high. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to that in a minute. So I don't know if you saw, but I did a little preview where I was preparing my green beans. So the green beans are pretty much prepared for this. I left a few out. The original sizes were this big. I actually like them to be more of a bite size. So um, what I did was I cut them in half, kind of at a diagonal. I don't know if you can see that. But I like to do it that way, but if you don't have time, 
and you want to make them smaller, there's no reason why you can't just take a bunch. And I actually cut them in a diagonal this way and you get a whole bunch at once, all cut up. I just saw one in here that's not cut. And of course you want to trim, make sure your ends, I just saw one here where the end was not taken off. I must have missed that one. But these are now ready. I'm going to add some oil to my pot. And I actually have avocado oil here. You can use olive oil, you can use ghee. Um, you could use a little bit of butter at the end. I don't like to add it at the beginning because the butter can burn. But I'm going to add these green beans in. It's sizzling already, so I'm going to just add those right in. And while those get started, I'm going to prep my, I'm going to turn them down for hair to medium. I'm going to prep my baby bellas. Baby bellows are nothing more than small portobello mushrooms. So what I, the way I like to cut these, now these have very tiny stems. I actually uh, used a towel to wipe off any of the dirt that might be on these. I don't like to wet the mushrooms because then they sweat in the, um, the pot rather than sauteing. So I like to try and keep them as dry as possible. If I do wash them, uh, wash them real quickly and, and try and dry them up in a towel a little bit before I put them into the oil. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking this mushroom and I'm just cutting it down through the entire mushroom. Now, if some of them are bigger, sometimes what I like to do is start the mushroom and then on this flat side, I put it flat side down and then just cut through to get a little bit smaller finished size, kind of a half, half slice. Alternatively, what you could do is cut the mushroom in half and do the same thing that I just did. And give those mushroom, uh, those green beans a stir. And the reason I put the green beans in before I put the mushrooms in is because I know you know Mary Ellen. Um, they cook quick. They take longer to cook. Mushrooms cook quicker than the green beans. So, and I don't want to overcook these mushrooms. As my mother-in-law used to say, they get rubbery if you cut them too long. I mean, if you cook them too long. Oh, that's my oven just coming up to temperature. All right. So now I have my mushrooms, and I like to cut the stems. I know some people don't like stems. If you don't like stems, you can take them off before you cut them and just use the caps. But I actually do like the stems. I like to use as much as possible. All right, and I'm gonna add these in to my green beans now. And I'm gonna let them saute a bit. And while that's going on, I think I'm going to bring it a little bit closer to me so you can see what's going on here. Let me just bring, bring it around. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. I had to step around my dog. <laughs> Now she, she seems to think that she's uh, part of the furniture here. All right, so now you can see me with my pot. I'm just going to give this a stir fry. Oh, they're starting to smell good. Oh, sauteed mushrooms. So flavorful. So what I did in the meantime was I prepped my chicken. So um, what I have here are some organic thighs that are deboned. Now, you can do this dish with bones or without. Um, it cooks quicker without the bone. 
And these are actually quite small. You'll find if you get the organic uh, chickens, they don't tend to be as big as the conventionally raised uh, chicken. So I think I'm going to just brown the thighs without cutting them. If you want bite-sized pieces, you can do that too. So just um, you know, know what you have and go accordingly. I'm gonna grab, I like to use a bamboo spatula when I'm cooking. And anyway, we grew up with wooden spoons in the house. And we don't need to cook this all the way. I'm going to show you in a little bit. Oh, those mushrooms are smelling so good. I'm going to grab some oven mitts here so I don't burn myself. But I'm just going to do a little look-see as to what we're doing here. All right, so I don't know if you can see, but the, the mushrooms are starting to sweat. Um, I said I don't want them to sweat, but actually what I don't want them to do is to steam. I want them to start sweating to release their natural juices. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to, excuse me for reaching around you, I'm going to remove them from the pot. And let them sit to the side. Because what I want to do now is brown the chicken. So I'm going to want to add a little bit more oil. I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit. Run away, greedy. Oh, look at these. You could eat these just like this, a little bit of salt and pepper. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in my chicken. Now, if you are getting an organic chicken, Chances are pretty good there's not a lot of fat on them. Just because of the way it was raised. If there is a lot of fat on it, you may want to go through and trim some of that away. So this is browning up pretty quickly right now because it's the pan's nice and hot. going to let it sit a bit and allow it to brown. So we have our cashew cream made up. We've got our veggies made up. We're now just going to work on the chicken and then we're going to combine them all in, give a little bit of seasoning. Now if you had a nice cast iron skillet, this would make the chicken brown up beautifully. So unfortunately, I don't have a Dutch oven that is cast iron. I only have shorter skillets. And this is kind of one of the workforces in my kitchen. We're making one pot meal. Right? I'm going to give it just a couple more minutes. It really hasn't been that long, maybe about three or four minutes total. And 
And as I said, if you wanted to do these in bite-sized pieces as opposed to the entire thigh, they'll cook up quicker as well. All right. So the idea here is you just want to brown the chicken. All right. Hey, Tina, how are you? So good to see you. What fun. All right. All right, what I'm gonna do at this point is check my recipe. <laughs> Sorry for leaning over you again. So I've now added in my chicken. I'm going to add back my veggies, all right? Now, one of the reasons for removing the fat is because I'm just adding the veggies back into the pot. So if there was a lot of fat in there, it would be added to the final recipe. All right. So let me show you what I've done here. All right. You can see the chicken's browning. The green beans. So everything is maybe about halfway cooked, three quarters of the way cooked. Now comes the fun part. So remember that cashew cream that we made earlier? Now we're going to add it in. So here's the cashew cream. Kind of the consistency of like um like a heavy cream, maybe a little bit heavier. So I'm gonna add that in. I'm going to pour it in. All right. I'm going to give it a little stir. And what this cream is going to do too it's going to loosen up some of the brown uh, pieces on the bottom and have all that wonderful flavor. And I'm going to add in a little bit of broth. As I can see, it's thickening up a little bit here. And I want to cook it a little bit longer. I'm going to turn it down to a simmer at this point. Okay. What I want to do is I want to add my Dijon mustard. And I'm going to add about, how much, what did I say, about a tablespoon. So this adds a lot of wonderful flavor without having to go through a lot of different spices. Now, if I was doing this by myself, I would just probably just squeeze in a bunch. But I want to show you what it looks like when it's all done. So I'm going to measure a little bit more carefully than I normally would. All right. Ooh, this is looking good. All right. And now the best part is adding a little bit of fresh tarragon, which I love tarragon and chicken. You usually um, will get like tarragon in chicken salad if you're getting a chicken salad or making a chicken salad. So what I would like to do, I'm going to push it back just for a second. All right. And you can see again. So here is what fresh tarragon looks like. All right. A little wilty. I was a little disappointed. I uh, tried to perk it up a little bit by um, adding 
by uh, washing it in water, cool water, and putting it in the fridge, didn't perk up that much. All right. But what basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take from the tip, so this is the tip, and I'm just going to strip down and remove the leaves. The tip is very tender, so I don't have to worry about the stem being there. A couple of these leaves at the end are a little icky, so I'm going to take those off. Icky is a technical term. All right, and I'm going to probably strip about, let's see, I'm going to get about... Actually, the, the recipe is about two teaspoons. You know what? I find that tarragon, um, I really like it. So I'm going to add a little bit more. If you don't tend to like a lot, then stick with the two teaspoons. It does add a nice flavor to it. All right. Here we go. I think that's plenty. And what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to take my knife and go through and give it a good dice. All right, not too much. I kind of like the pieces in it. Oh, it smells so good. I love that, and that's about a tablespoon. all that goodness up and I'm going to add it to my dish now up here. Hi again. <laughs> all right. And now we are essentially done. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. See it's cooking down. Now, I want to have a lot of this because it tastes really great if you put it over, say, a brown rice. Now, because these pieces are so small, this is almost done cooking. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plate it up for you so you can see it. But the nice part about this is if you have bigger pieces um, or if you don't want to saute and cook as much up front, you stick it in the oven for 15, 20 minutes, uh, depending on the size of the um, chicken that you have. So what I would like to do, I am just going to rinse out this bowl that I use for my green beans. All right. And had some leftover brown rice from a program that I just did. Mary Ellen, you should be very familiar with that. <laughs> so I'm going to just show you how you can just plate this up. Let's give this a little, oops, about to lose my lighting. A little push back here. There we go. Wonderful. So probably about about a half a cup of brown rice in our bowl and I'm going to take let's see I've got a slotted spoon here All right, clean up a little bit of the mess. And it's kind of nice if you have some parsley, or better yet, if you have some of the tarragon left over, you can put a few pieces of that on top. All right, and just going to get that paper towel here. And 
here you have it. So that's our creamy Dijon tarragon chicken with green beans and mushrooms. So guess what I'm having for dinner tonight? <laughs> I hope you try it. Let me know if you do. This is a wonderful dish. Um, it's got everything that you need. I probably would put like a, a salad on the side of this and then I'm done. You know, the salad maybe might have some tomatoes or something red in it just to add some more color, some carrots as well. So I hope you try it. Let me know if you do. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you stay well and stay safe. Happy cooking and I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me. See you soon.